When I first started my eBay business, I wished I had a video like this because it would have helped me know exactly what obstacles to avoid and the biggest risks that can come with starting an eBay store. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Let's go. What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Sam. And what I do here is break down various different tips and tricks to help you make money online. But in today's video, I'm gonna be going through the biggest risks that you need to be aware of when it comes to starting an eBay business this year. These are some of the things that I wish I knew from when I first started, because if I was aware of it, I would have been able to maneuver a lot of different obstacles, a lot of different problems along my eBay journey. So if you're a beginner that's looking to get started on eBay, or even if you've been selling on eBay for some time, make sure you stick around throughout the whole video because there's gonna be a lot of useful information that will help you save time and save money. As always, I don't wanna waste any more time. I wanna get right into it. If you find any value in the video, don't forget to press the like button. Don't don't forget to subscribe as well, hit the bell notification so that YouTube can let you know when a new video has been released. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right into it. So the first risk of starting an eBay business that I'm gonna be discussing in this video, doesn't just relate to an eBay business, but it relates to a physical product business in general, is that you could end up holding too much stock. Now, obviously, if you're doing drop shipping, this doesn't necessarily apply to you, but if you're someone that's importing stock or buying stock from a supplier, you can end up with way too much stock. And there's a few issues with this. Number one is that the price that you need to sell the item for may reduce the longer that you hold your stock. So for example, if you buy stock in let's say January and you know that you need to sell that particular item for let's say $10, but if you've ordered too much stock and you're holding it up until March or April or May, the price of that item may have reduced, which means that you now need to sell the item for around $7. And this could be due to any reason. It could be due to a financial crisis. It could be due to people not necessarily buying the item anymore and all of your competition reducing their price, which means that you now need to reduce your price too, which means that if you did all the way too much stock, you're gonna to have to sell each product at a loss. So this is something that I've definitely gone through in the past with a lot of the products that I used to sell. And that's why on this channel, I always preach about selling products that people need rather than products that people want. And also sell a product that there's not too much competition so that you're not forced to reduce your prices. When I first started selling on eBay, I was selling an item that so many other sellers were selling and it wasn't necessarily an item that people needed. And it was also an item that the model changed year after year. And if you sell this type of item and you order way too much stock, you're putting yourself at a risk because anything can happen where you now need to sell the item at a cheaper price, which means that you may end up losing money. So the main lesson that I learned from this and the lesson that you should take away from it is order enough stock to last you a certain amount of time. A lot of people tend to get really excited when they're a beginner and they're looking to start their business and they order way too much stock, more than what they need. For me personally, I always ordered around two weeks, maybe three weeks worth of stock. I never ever ordered around four or five months worth of stock. And this is a big mistake that a lot of beginners tend to make. So moving on to the second risk when it comes to starting an eBay business that you need to be aware of is the fact that eBay could close your account for any reason at any time. Now, to be very honest with you, this has never happened to me. The same eBay accounts that I've been running now for the past nine years, eight years, seven years, all of the different eBay stores that I've started, they've never ever closed down my account for no reason. But then again, when it comes to building your business on another platform that's owned by another business, this is something that you need to think about because essentially eBay is a business that's making decisions that are good for them. Sometimes they make decisions that are good for the seller. Sometimes they make decisions that are good for the buyer. But with every single decision that they make, it's always good for them and it's always about their profit and their revenue. And this is why you need to think about yourself and your future. So what I ended up doing was building my business on Shopify because going back to the first point that I made about holding too much stock, it didn't really make sense to me that I was buying all of this inventory from China selling it on eBay and anything can happen at any point. And it doesn't even need to be them closing down my eBay account or your eBay account. It could just be for the fact that they might de-rank you in the search results. It might even be the fact that a customer might complain about something and then eBay might see that as you not being a good seller and then they might push you further down in the search results. Anything can happen where your sales slow down because eBay is making a decision. And that's why I believe that if you are thinking about building an e-commerce business and you're serious about it, you need to have multiple streams of income coming from your one e-commerce brand. So over the years, I've diversified my my brands over to Amazon and Shopify. But the main platform that I like to focus on the most is Shopify because I believe that you're gonna have a lot of control when it comes to the decisions that you make for your own business. Platforms like Amazon and eBay are great. You're able to make a lot of money from them because there's so much traffic that passes through Amazon and eBay every single month. I believe that Amazon has over 400 million 
active visitors every single month and eBay has over 300 million active visitors. So there's so much potential when it comes to making money. And both eBay and Amazon are big parts of my e-commerce brand. And even though it's harder to get traffic onto your own website using something like Shopify, I believe that over the long term, this is something that you need to focus on more and more because you never know what decision Amazon or eBay or any marketplace is gonna make. And that's the reason why I believe that this is one of the risks that you need to be aware of. Always have in the back of your mind that eBay is its own business and anything can happen at any time. And you don't wanna end up with a bunch of stock that you're not able to sell. So as you start building up your eBay business, you start automating the process, you start getting a lot of revenue. You now need to think about what exactly you're gonna do when it comes to diversifying your risk amongst different platforms. So for me, I've never sold on Etsy before. The main platforms that I focused on are Shopify, Amazon, and eBay. But if you are selling on eBay right now, you might be selling a product that is suitable for Etsy, so you might wanna think about that too. So jumping straight into one of the next risks of starting an eBay business is the fact that if you're selling directly from your home and you have to give your customer a return address and it's your home address, that's a big risk because you don't want random strangers to have your home address, especially when it comes to them knowing what products you're selling because you never know what could happen. So just to give you guys a quick story time as to what happened to me, there was a time where I sent an item to a customer. They wasn't necessarily happy with it. They wanted to return the item, but then when it arrived back to me, it was broken and it wasn't in the same condition that I sent it out to them. So I let eBay know this. I let eBay know that the item was damaged upon arrival. And because of that, eBay didn't give the money back to the buyer because of the seller money back guarantee because eBay states that the item needs to come back in the same condition that I sent it out to them. And the customer also mentioned in the messages that they damaged the item when they tried to use it. So because of this, eBay didn't give the money back to the customer. And obviously the customer wasn't happy about this. So what the customer ended up doing is copy and pasting my office address. And then below that, what they said is see you soon with an angry face. So even though this wasn't my home address, I didn't necessarily want a customer to come to my office to either hassle me or my staff. So I learned straight away that even if you have an office and you're not necessarily working from your home, you don't really want people to know the place of work where you're going to every single day because you never know what type of crazy people you're dealing with when it comes to selling items on eBay because essentially you're sending items all around the country to random people. So what I did straight away from that point is that I applied for a PO box and there's so many different companies that you can use. You can go into Google, type in PO box and the way that PO box works, if you guys are not aware, is that you buy a PO box for a certain amount of time. You can either do three months, six months or a year and whichever company you go with they're going to give you an address and then that address you can now give to people and then when they send you something it's going to go to the PO box and then when you do apply for a PO box you've got two options you can have a do it so that you go there and collect the stuff from the PO box office, or you can pay a little bit extra for them to now deliver the item to you. So essentially you're masking your address so no one will ever know your original address and you're still gonna receive deliveries the same way. Now the company that I've used for my PO box over the past few years is Royal Mail. It's a very simple process. You just apply for it, go onto this website right here, and click apply. And you can either apply for a personal one or a business one. And then from there, you can now set your duration in terms of when you want it to start, whether you want three months, six months, or 12 months. And then as I said earlier, you can choose your service in terms of whether you want to collect it, whether you want Royal Mail to deliver it to you. You can do this one here, which is transfer, which I've never seen before. And then once you do that, everything's going to be set up so no one will ever know your original address. And this is a service that I always pay for. Even if I feel like I need to cut some expenses from my business, I'll never ever cut this one because it's definitely essential when it comes to keeping your business safe and as I already said there's two main reasons why you don't want someone to have your real address the first one is that you don't want angry customers turning up to where you work or where you live second reason is that if you're selling valuable items you don't want someone to know where you're storing your items because obviously that's not safe at all so bear this in mind as you continue to build up your eBay business because it's definitely something that you need to consider one of the next risky parts of building a business specifically on eBay is the fact that eBay is built on a feedback system and customers will perceive your business dependent on how good your feedback is. But then again, in the day and age that we live in right now, customers wanna be able to read reviews and read feedback before they make a purchase doesn't necessarily only apply to eBay, but the main issue with the feedback system when it comes to eBay is that customers will leave you negative feedback for no reason. And the lower your feedback score gets, the more and more you're gonna be less likely to make sales in the future. Now, this isn't a straight fact. I'm not saying that if your feedback is really bad, you're not gonna be able to make sales because of course there's other elements. If you can reduce your price, you might be able to beat out your competition. But the way that I like to build my eBay stores and the way that I've been doing it over these past few years is to try and maintain a high feedback score because I know that customers are gonna look at this 
before they look at anything else because customers don't necessarily want to buy something from you if they're going to waste their time having to send it back so instead of them reading through your reviews seeing exactly what each person said they're more likely to look at your feedback percentage and then from there they're going to make a buying decision now when it comes to selling on ebay and getting feedback there's three different types of feedback that a customer can leave you they can either leave you positive feedback neutral or negative now it's obvious that you want to get as much positive feedback as possible because the more positive feedback that you get because it's done on a percentage basis even if you do get a negative feedback it's not going to dramatically affect your percentage score like for example if we just jump into ebay right now i'm going to show you two different products just to give you an example of what i'm trying to say so we've got this listing right here which is for a hairbrush and we've got this listing right here which is for a similar hairbrush it may not be the exact same but you're going to get my point once i get through this example now as we can see this seller has been able to sell over 221 different units at seven pounds and 99p however this listing has only been able to sell 12 units and they're selling it for 10 pound less now it's not a massive difference but one of the reasons why more customers have probably gone to the other one is due to the fact that if we look at the feedback score for this seller right here that hasn't had that many sales their feedback score is 99.3 percent and they don't have a large feedback score as well so they haven't been accumulating a lot of feedback over the years however if we look at the other one we can see that they've got 99.8 percent and they've got over 83,000 feedbacks given from the time that they started their ebay store so because they've got so much feedback even if they've probably got more negative feedbacks than the other one it doesn't necessarily matter because they've got so much more positive feedback so if we just drill down a little bit further if we just look at the seller that hasn't made that many sales we can see that in the last 12 months they've only been given two negative feedbacks however they've only received around 346 positive feedbacks However, if we look at the seller that has made more sales, they've received more negative feedbacks, 10. However, they've received way more positive feedback, which means that their feedback percentage is gonna be a lot higher. And the reason why this is a risk when it comes to building a business on eBay is because the feedback that you get is gonna change the buyer's perception on your business. You may be a better business than any of your competitors in terms of faster delivery, better quality product, all of these different things. But because your feedback is a lot less than your competition, it may affect your sales. And the reason why I'm letting you guys know this now before you start or if you're in the early stages of building up your business is because you want to try and remove any negative feedback as much as possible. So I've got my own strategy when it comes to removing negative feedback and preventing negative feedback from even going on my eBay store in the first place, which I go through in my step-by-step -step guide, Project eBay. I've got a whole lecture dedicated to showing you exactly what you need to be aware of when it comes to removing negative feedback from your eBay store. So you can check that out by clicking the first link in my description down below. But one quick thing that you guys can do if you find yourself in a position where your feedback percentage is slipping is that you can buy more things through your eBay store. So the feedback that you get as a buyer counts towards the same feedback score that you get as a seller. So if you notice that your feedback percentage has gone down to 99.1%, instead of buying things through Amazon or buying things through other websites like you would normally do, what you could do is just buy things through your eBay store. Most buyers don't necessarily go through your feedback history and see whether or not it came through you being a buyer or a seller. So you can just buy a bunch of things through your eBay store, the sellers will leave you positive feedback and then that will boost up your feedback percentage. This is what I always advise a lot of my students to do if they're in a position where their feedback score isn't that great. If you're capable of buying things through your eBay store, getting the positive feedback from sellers, that's one way that you could do it. The only other way that you can improve your feedback percentage is by removing any negative feedback that violates eBay's feedback policy. And again, this is something else that I wish I knew from when I started, that eBay actually has a policy to protect a lot of sellers when it comes to buyers leaving negative feedback. If you've received a negative feedback, feedback that violates eBay's policies, you can call up eBay, let them know the situation and they can remove the negative feedback for you straight away. It normally takes around five or 10 minutes for the negative feedback to come off your account once you've spoken to someone at eBay. But if you wanna know my method of what I do and what I say and how I do the whole process of removing the negative feedback, don't forget to check the first link in the description down below. So moving on to the final risky part of building an eBay business, which is that there's a lot of scammers on eBay, a lot of ways that buyers try to scam you. And I know I've said this so many times throughout the whole video, but this is the same with every single platform. It's not just with eBay, it's something that you need to be aware about when it comes to selling products online. Anytime that you start an online business where you're sending products to random people, you're always gonna deal with one type of scam or another. And this goes the same way with eBay. So as you guys know, I've been selling on eBay now for so many years and I've seen so many different types of scams. There's scams where buyers try to send you back an empty box. There's scams where 
Customers try to lie and say they didn't receive the item. There's other types of scams where customers will try and threaten you with negative feedback. There's so many different types of little scams that you need to know if you're planning on building your business on eBay. But I've already made a video breaking down a lot of the scams that you need to know. This year, if you're thinking about building your business on eBay, I'm gonna leave that video right there. Make sure you watch that video straight after this one because it's gonna give you a lot of insight into certain scams that you need to avoid, certain things that you need to do to prevent yourself from getting scammed in the first place. As I said, I've been selling on eBay for so many years now and there's been so many different times where buyers have tried to scam me. A lot of them have been successful, but a lot of them haven't been successful. So make sure you check out that video straight after this one. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification so that YouTube can let you know when a new video has been released. And let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this video. If you enjoyed it, put it down below. I'm trying my best to respond back to as many comments as possible. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.